and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer and today we are making a gingerbread hat. <laughs> In case you ever dreamed of being a gingerbread delicious gingerbread man or you have a kid that is theming something for gingerbread for their school like mine is. My kid is experiencing his first spirit week or spirit month at his school. Um, they've had it in the past, but this is the first time he has chosen to participate. So we have this cute little icings happening. Icing. We have peppermint twists. We have drippy icing from the top. <laughs> this hat works up super fast. Um, what you're going to need for supplies is you're going to need a gingerbread colored yarn. You're going to need something for icing. I chose white sparkle. This is Premier Basic Shimmer. This is also Premier Basic Shimmer. This is for the peppermints. You don't have to do peppermints. You can do whatever candies you want. <laughs> you can do berries and whatever. Um, this is the Premier Basic Shimmer, but in the color Peppermint Shimmer. And I used, I, I don't remember what hook size I used, but I do say it in the tutorial. I think it's 5.5 millimeter hook. Um, maybe six. I don't know. I do tell you in the tutorial. So stay tuned for this really cute, fun, quick, easy, holiday hat. <laughs> if you want to be a gingerbread girl instead of a gingerbread man, you could also put a cute little bow on the top. Like you put a bow up here, you put a bow right here, wherever you want the bow. Um, I do give you directions how to customize this as I always do to make it your own. You can also, instead of putting peppermints, you could put a face up here if that's what you want. Uh, I always give you alternatives on how to make this your own and to change sizes and all that good stuff. We are learning a new stitch in this tutorial and it is the foundationless double crochet. But of course, if you have a hard time following that part of the tutorial, which is perfectly okay, just do a chain and then a double crochet. I also explained that in the tutorial. So I hope you will join me in making this really fun gingerbread, <laughs> gingerbread hat. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to go down to the table. All right. So to get started for this gingerbread hat. <laughs> I have some big twist value in the color mushroom. You can use any yarn that you think is what matches your idea of what gingerbread looks like. There are lots of different tan colored options on the market. Mushroom is what I found worked. Um, big twist value also has a color called camel which is more of like a dark gingerbread color. Um, so yeah and I'm sure Premier has colors that will match as well but then I have my scrap balls. This is Premier Yarns Basics Shimmer, as is the white. We have it in the white and then the peppermint shimmer. This is just scraps I had left over from another project. Um, and I am using a six millimeter hook. You could probably use a five and a half millimeter hook or six and a half millimeter hook. It's not really going to matter because we're making this hat based off of um, whoever's head you're making this for. So. I'm going to pull out the center if I can find it. Oh, it's already pulled out. Oh, made my job easier. I'm going to pull out a bunch so that I'm not struggling on camera to, to work with this. I'm going to throw that back up there. All right, now this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other hats I make because we are not making a ribbed brim. And this is still going to be a bottom up hat. So we're going to start with a slip knot. And we are going to do a foundationless double crochet. Now, I don't think I've done a foundationless double crochet on the channel before, so we are going to do this together, and it's going to be fine, and you're going to get this, okay? So to do a foundationless double crochet, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. We're going to yarn over like we're making a double crochet, and we're going to go back into that very first stitch where we, the slip knot is touching. You're going to pull up a loop. We're going to chain one. That is technically the chain section. Of, so we're creating a chain and a double crochet on one. All together. And then we're going to complete the double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That has created, see there's a double crochet here, double crochet there. Alright, now we're going to yarn over. We're going to go at the base where we did that chain stitch. We are going to make sure we grab both loops there, pull up a loop, chain one, that's our chain stitch, and then complete the double crochet. 
All right, I'm going to show you this several more times so that we all understand what is happening. All right, so see how if you pull it apart, it looks like here's a double crochet, here's a double crochet in the middle, and here's another double crochet. The stitch that we made the chain out of is at the bottom right here. Okay, and there's two pieces to that. So you want to make sure you get through both of those. All right, so we're going to wrap our yarn, go through that bottom stitch, make sure you have both pieces of that bottom stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, and then finish the double crochet. Okay, I'll show you again. Don't forget the chain one, double crochet. Now this is going to be our foundation row. So it's technically building sink or the chain, the chain row and the double crochet row all at the same time. Okay, yarn over. And if you gotta pull at your stitches to figure out where you're going, pull at your stitches. Okay, make sure you're crocheting loose so you can figure out where you're going. And this is gonna take practice and you're gonna have to really like get a feel for what the stitches look like. So you're on this side, just tip it towards you. This part right here is the bottom of the stitch. See how we have the two pieces there? Pull up a loop, chain one, and then finish the double crochet. Yarn over like we're making a double crochet, go into that bottom stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, and then complete the double crochet. We're going to do this until this strip fits around the person's head we're making this for. So for little man, his head is about the same size as mine. So I'm going to continue this strip until it is about 22 inches. And then um, that's all there is to this first row. I know that it seems difficult, complicated, it's confusing. This is a new stitch to us. It's really not that difficult. If you've done some of my other tutorials to where we are doing the foundationless single crochet, you can already kind of figure this out. If you absolutely cannot figure this stitch out, if this is too difficult for you, your brain can't wrap around it, do a chain until it fits around your head loosely and do the next row double crochet. It's that simple. So I will let you know when I get to the end of this row. And at any time there is a gear icon, you can slow down my stitches if you want to just keep watching me, but in slow motion. But I recommend turning the volume off if you're going to watch me in slow motion because it can get a little creepy. Listen to me talk like that. <laughs> so, we're just going to, whoops, I went in the wrong part of the stitch. Don't forget your chain before you finish the double crochet. I just like doing this because it gives a little bit more stretch down here. Whereas if you chain and then do the double crochet, there's not as much stretch here and it can be kind of stiff. So that's why we're doing this stitch instead of chain and then double crochet because it does give it more stretch than if you're just chaining. I do have my tape measure handy. I'm going to measure this for inches, I'm going to count how many stitches I did for those inches, and then I'm going to measure it on my head to make sure that it fits around my head because his head is the same width as mine. His head's just slightly shorter than mine. And once you get the hang of this this type of stitching, it comes much easier. Like the first, I don't know, 10 times I've done these type of stitches, it was ridiculously slow going. And I couldn't put it down because I couldn't figure out where my stitches were supposed to go. And if that's what you're experiencing, that's normal. It's all a matter of you having to learn. It's going to be fine. You got this. I know that you can do this. It's just a matter of learning where your stitches go, learning what the stitches should look like, and getting the muscle memory for 
this new movement. And some of you are like, I've been doing that stitch for years, and that's fine. <laughs> you can fast forward to the end of this. You already know what we're doing. And I should probably say ahead of time, if you hear ladder noises and or hammering or sawing, we are in hopefully the final day of construction in our house. He said he's going to be out there maybe three hours. And then they, they're done. We're just getting the gutters replaced. Um, that means we may hear men noises, ladder noises, saw, but also the dogs randomly decide they can't stand them being out there anymore and then they bark. <laughs> and that's just how that rolls. Okay. Now this is going to be a super easy, simple hat. Um... I, I debated going back and forth whether I wanted to make this just gingerbread style or whether I wanted to do a gingerbread man hat. And I decided we're just going to do gingerbread style and it's going to be fun and it's going to be cute. Um, I didn't like the way the gingerbread man face was coming out. It was looking a little creepy. So we decided we're just gingerbread. It's the hat for the gingerbread man. And we're still going to have some cute candy details. measure and see what we're at. I am at about 16 inches, so I only have a couple more inches to go. And just like that with TV magic, we are at, it's at about 20 inches, but when I give it a little stretch, it reaches 22 inches, so I think that's going to be just fine. But we're going to give it one more extra stitch, just for good measure. And for me and my gauge using a 6 millimeter hook, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52 stitches. We are at 52 stitches. We're going to fold this and we're going to connect it. But to connect it, we have to connect the top and the bottom because it's an extra tall stitch. So what we're going to do is we are going to yarn over. We're going to go into that stitch like we're making another slip stitch. Okay. And then make sure you fold this over so it's not twisted. We're going to go in the spot right next to where your slip knot was. Okay. You're going to pull through a loop. Pull through that bottom stitch that connects it, okay, and pull through that yarn over. So now we have two loops, and we're going to go through the top part of the stitch and slip stitch through all three of those, and we're going to chain one, and that is how we connect top and bottom and middle, okay? So it's completely connected there now. All right, that is what the brim of the hat looks like. Now what we're building is actually the bottom, this part is going to be the brim that actually folds up, okay? So we are going to do double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So because our number was 52, we should end the row with 52 double crochets. But if your number was 48 or whatever else your number was, just whatever your, your starting chain hat or your starting row had, Whatever amount of stitches you put in that row, make sure that your next two rows have that same amount. Actually, it's going to be more than two rows, but just right now we're just doing two rows. Just double crochet in every stitch all the way around. This hat could not be simpler. Just double crochet. 
We're going to do two rows of double crochet. So do this one. Slip stitch should join at the end of this row. Chain one, double crochet the next row. And the reason I do chain one before I create the double crochet is it leaves less of a weird gap at the beginning and the end of the row. So it's less obvious where the, the row ended. There's less of a, 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 a jag. Oops. I like I slammed my hook down. It made like a loud noise. I was <laughs> always scared I'm going to break my furls hooks. Alright, we're approaching the end of the row. We're going to put our last double crochet. A slip stitch to join chain one and put a double crochet in that same stitch. I do this because it makes it it makes this line less obvious. You don't have to do that if you want to chain two or three to move on and pretend that's a double crochet. You can absolutely do that but that's this is the way I like to do it. Now we're just going to do another row of double crochet. These the start row and the next two rows are going to be the brim that folds up. <clears throat> So because this part's going to fold up, we're going to need to equal the other side with three more rows of double crochet that's going to be behind this. So this part's going to actually fold up, and there's going to be three more rows exactly like this behind it. So in total, you are going to need, including this first row, this is row two, and then row three, you're going to need six rows total of the double crochet. And that is just the brim. So just make in total six rows of double crochet, including that first row counts as a row. So one, two, this is three. You need six rows in total, and then I will meet you back here to show you what our next step is. All right, so we're to the last stitch of the sixth row. We're going to slip stitch to join, and we're going to pull out a loop, and we're going to leave this yarn set. Now, if you need to, so you don't accidentally pull that back out, you can put a stitch marker there, and it will hold it. Now what we're going to do, and this is going to be really weird, is we're going to work down on this bottom edge, the very first edge, okay? That's where we're working. And I'm using the peppermint twist. You can use whatever color. Actually, no, we're going to do white because we're going to do icing. We're gonna, and I dropped it on the floor. We're going to do icing. So we're going to make this bottom part look like scoops of ice, icing, not ice cream. And to do that, we're going to get our white sparkle. And I know this is going to seem like it doesn't make any sense to us, but it, I promise it's going to be really cute. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to come along here. We're going to connect over here. Because see how that's got a little funkiness right there? We're going to connect back here. I am just going to run a row of really... Actually, slip stitch. We're going to connect this with a single crochet. Alright. We're going to do very loosely, we're going to do single crochets around here, but you want to make sure that your single crochets are loose because you don't want to ruin the stretchiness that we already built into this. Let's see if I can figure out where to put the stitch. I've never done the the bottom side of this type of stitch before. So there should be, I think I said the, the starting number was 52. Hang on, because I want to crochet over the top of both of those tails. And that one tail is trying to hide from me. All right. Let's try this again. Attach with a single crochet. You don't want to 
destroy any of the stretchiness that we put in so make sure that this is loose if you have trouble with your your tension and you are it crocheting too tight go up like two hook sizes so that this stays loose because we don't want this tight around our head there I'm just crocheting really loose single crochets around the bottom And this is going to be like the little icing detail at the bottom but like I said we're going to fold this brim up so this is going to be a little extra detail but it's not it's not going to be where you think it should be <laughs> it's going to be up higher it's going to it's going to be cute just trust me just trust the whole process guys just trust me with this I started tightening up those stitches. I need to loosen them up again. And now because I'm crocheting so loose, I keep slipping out of the stitches. This is going to be so cute. I cannot wait to see this on Little Man. In case you don't know, my son is for the first time at nine years old deciding to participate in Spirit Month at his school. For the month of December, they're doing themes. And every day they have a different theme to dress up as. Last week was Gingerbread Man, which is why I'm recording this last week, but you're not seeing it until next week because of the scheduling. <laughs> That's how it's scheduled. And um, they also have a Grinch day, so I'm going to make a Grinch hat. I'm not doing a tutorial for the Grinch hat because there's 8,000 tutorials for Grinch hats on the internet. Right, so this is acting as our icing. And that is... The gutter is being attached to my house, if you can hear that. Right, slip stitch to join. Now we are going to chain one and put a single crochet here. And we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. We're going to skip over the next two, three stitches. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to go in that fourth stitch and put a single crochet. And it's going to give us this cute little loop. Okay. Chain one, two, three, and four. Pull out some more yarn from the center. Skip the next one, two, three stitches. Put it in the fourth single crochet. Chain four. One, two, three. Skip three and in the fourth put a single crochet. One, two, three, four. Skip one, two, three and in the fourth put a stitch. Chain one. Two, three, and four. Skip one, two, three, and in the fourth, put a single crochet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and in the fourth, single crochet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and in the fourth, single crochet. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, single crochet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and in the fourth, single crochet. One, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Now, if your number is anything other than four here, or three, skip three and fourth, just like make it work. 
I'm just slip stitch into that first stitch here. I'm going to cut. Close that off. Now this is where things get a little weird, okay? You ready? Fold it. <laughs> Fold it in half. Line up the burgundy, or the bur any burgundy. The brown with the brown. Okay. That is what the top of our hat's gonna look like. Now we're gonna go back to this part. We're gonna continue to build the hat up this way. If you want to keep this folded, you can attach it here with a single crochet um, just to keep it folded, but that's how our hat is gonna look. And now we're gonna build it up. This icing part is going to be up here. This is gonna be the bottom of the hat that goes by our eye, or eyebrow, okay? So from that point on, We have about a two inch brim because we're actually the inside. Our brim is going to be about two inches. So the measurement, we're, we're going to make this, we're going to add six more inches onto the, not six. We need, let me think before I talk, from the fold up six inches before we start our decreases. Okay, so from the fold up. We need six inches. So we're going to continue the double crochets on this. In fact, let's measure this. So it's at four. So we need to add four more inches to this for a total of eight would work. So that's the way we'll do it. From here, from this part up, make sure this part is eight inches and then we'll start the decrease or six inches from the fold because that's two inches so just continue i'm going to take my stitch marker out continue with the chain one double crochet and since there's already one two three four five six rows here equals about the four inches put another six rows on until it's 12 rows and that should give you the correct measurement so if you do six more rows it should measure about eight inches or six inches with the folded brim. Um, also, what we're gonna do is when we get done with the, the hat and we fold this brim up, we are going to create some little peppermint candies and put them around the brim. And so that's actually gonna, we're gonna sew it together so that this stays folded anyway, so you don't really have to do anything extra. Um, so just, Continue on, put on, how many rows did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six more rows. So if you want to leave your stitch marker right here, this is row one. Do six rows, and then we'll come back and measure, and I will show you guys how to do the decreases for the top of the hat. Just double crochet. It's a real simple hat. Just double crochets. Alright, so with the folded brim, we are slightly under 6 inches, but that's all a matter of gauge. That doesn't really matter. So what we are going to do is we are going to do a decrease. And what we are going to do, whew, I am freezing, is we are going to chain 1, and we are going to decrease this very first stitch. We're going to do a double crochet decrease. So we're going to wrap our yarn and go in that same stitch like we're making a double crochet, pull up a loop. Pull off two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off three. That's our decrease. That's taking two double crochets and reducing it down to one. All right, and we are going to do that at the four points. So here, 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 and directly opposite of here. It doesn't matter if we're exactly on for our numbers. Our numbers do not have to be exact. We just are going to estimate at the four points we're going to do a decrease. So we are going to crochet, double crochet, until, oops, we get to, if we fold this in half till we get to this point right here, so one, two, three more stitches.
And this stitch count right here does not matter because we're making this at all for all sizes. Double crochet decrease. Now we're going to go around till we reach the opposite of this one. So somewhere right here in the middle. Just double crochet. This yarn has tangled on me several times. I don't usually have a problem with big twist. just eyeball it as long as you have the four points for this row it's not going to much matter that was my other decrease that was my third decrease of the row So now we're at we're on this edge, so I'm gonna add another decrease. And then I'm gonna finish up the row in double crochets. stitch to join. I'm going to pause here to go turn the heat up because I'm freezing. Chain one. Alright. I not only turned the heat up, but I uh, put threw on a sweater. Apparently I'm the only one that's cold, so. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do another row of decreases, but this time I have 48 stitches because I just decreased by four. At least I think I have 48. I didn't count. I am going to divide that we're going to do six decreases in this row so whatever your number is divide it by six and kind of estimate around that <clears throat> the 48 divided by six is eight so every eight stitches we are going to have a decrease which means we have to make six stitches and then decrease the seventh and the eighth stitch if that makes sense so i'm going to do the decrease in the first stitch here and then i'm going to do six double crochet Three, four, five, six, and then the seventh and the eighth we're going to decrease together. Ladder noises from outside. And then we're going to do six double crochet. Two. Three, four, five, six, and the seventh and eighth stitch we are going to decrease together, and six double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, Six. The seventh and eighth we're going to decrease together. Six double crochet. Seven. 
six. And the seventh and eighth stitch, we're going to double crochet together. Six more double crochet. Four, five, six, seven, and eighth. We're going to double crochet together. And then in an ideal world, we should have six stitches left. See if we do one, two, three, four, five. We only had five. We can put a sixth in the false stitch, but we're not going to. It doesn't matter. We still kind of evenly decreased at the top. All right. All right, now at this point, we are going to switch colors. Now you can do the whole hat, um, this color if you want, but I wanted it to look like icing is dripping down the top of the hat as well, so I'm gonna switch back to the icing color, which is white glitter. And what we are going to do here is a spike stitch, okay? So we are gonna attach, not where we just sealed off with the stitch before, just so that we can work over the top of that and it's more smooth. We're going to attach with a single crochet and then we're going to do some spike stitches to give it the look of icing that's dripping down. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here, so past the double crochet row and down past that and we are going to do a single crochet very loosely, pull up the stitches and that is a spike stitch. Okay, And you can just randomize these spike stitches. Put single crochet, put a couple single crochets, and just put them in the normal spots where you put a single crochet. And then randomly do a spike stitch. So go drop down to the row below, pull up a stitch. Make sure you have lots of room. Elongate that stitch. And that gives it the look of dripping icing every once in a while. I'm just going to do that and and really randomize it. So like right now I did two stitches and then I'm going to do a drop down spike stitch. And then the next row I'll do or the next section we'll do one, two, three, four single crochets. And then the drippy stitch, which is called a spike stitch. Make sure you have lots of room or otherwise this is going to pinch it closed and you don't want that. You want the stitch to drip down. Okay. And then we'll do, we'll do three this time. And then we'll do the spike stitch. And then what the heck, we'll do another spike stitch next to it. And then we'll do some single crochets. One, two do three just completely that's what you want it to look completely random it shouldn't make any kind of sense because that's not what homemade gingerbread men look like and so that's what it should look like you got the little drippy drips <clears throat> And if you wanted a really big drip, instead of going down to the first row, you can go way down here to the row below that, pull up a super long drip. See how we did that? Now we got two rows below instead of just one row. If you don't want to add the drippy row, you don't have to add the drippy row. It's fine. This should be totally, totally random. And see how that's wanting to pull a bunch? You want to make sure there's enough room in that stitch so it's not doing that.
Just random drips. Make it look like it's topped with icing. We add one more where we drop down two rows. Slip stitch to join. Now, now we have that drippy row. Of course, I'm gonna have to cut that out because that was our tail. All right, so we got the drips happening. <laughs> now we're gonna go back to the decreasing. So we're gonna go back to double crochet and the whole top of the hat is gonna end in white now. So we're gonna do the very first two stitches together. We're gonna double crochet them together. Let me look at my math. All right, so we're, now we're gonna do a seven stitch decrease so we did two together, so we need to do five more stitches in double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and then two crochet to get double crochet two the next two stitches together, and then five, two. Three, four, five, and double crochet the next two stitches together. This hat is going to be ridiculously cute. I'm unfolding that bottom part just so that it flips over easier. We can pin that up later. You can also, if you want, Instead of doing the candy here, you could put a face here if you want. It, it really doesn't matter. You can make this however you want it. But this is just, this is the way I wanted it. One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Double crochet those two together. Five more stitches. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Slow down, Jen and two double crochets together. I need to put my glasses back on because I flipped them on my head. <laughs> Five double crochets. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then two double crochets together. This is the only gingerbread man I could have in my life because I'm allergic to both gluten and I'm a diabetic. So <laughs> this is making me want some sweets, but it's all right. Five double crochet. Two, three, four, five. Two double crochets together. One, two, three, four, five, and of course last row we had one too few and now we have one too many but it's fine. It all works out. Right. So there we go. It's starting to decrease a little bit more. It's, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's going straight, but it's supposed to be going in. All right. We got our little folded up brim. That's what our hat is looking like so far. Isn't it cute? All right. Now, I'm going to switch to single crochets because this hat's getting kind of tall. So we really want to do like a, a more of a defined decrease. So we're going to do 
four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna single crochet two together. And then four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then two single crochets together. And then four single crochets. One, two, three, four, two single crochets together. One, two, whoops, two, three, four, two double crochet or single crochets together. One, two, three, four, two single crochets together. One, two, three, four, two single crochets together. One, two, three, four. We're at the end of our row and we still have an extra stitch, so I'm going to do three single crochets together. Slip stitch to join. Chain one. Now we're cooking on fire. Now it's really starting to decrease. All right, now we're going to put three single crochets over the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. And then we're gonna two single crochets together. And do that all the way around. So three single crochets. And then two single crochets together. And then three single crochets, one, two, three, two single crochets together, one, two, three. Does anybody ever know what I, when I do that what I'm referring to? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Three, one, two, three. That's a commercial. <laughs> it's an old, old, old commercial. Three single crochets, two single crochets together. Three single crochets. And then the last two stitches should be two together. Slip stitch to join. See how it's really coming together now? That's going to be the top of the hat. Super cute. I think it's, it's looking adorable. I can't wait to add the details. All right, now we're doing two single crochets. Two together. Two single crochets. One, two, two together. All the way around. One, two, two together. One, two, two together. One, two single crochets, two single crochets together. My arms are hurting. I've been crocheting too much over the past couple of days. Two single crochets. Two together. Two single crochets. Two together. Slip stitch to join. Chain one. We are almost done with this hat. Well, the body of the hat, anyway. All right, now we're going to do one single crochet, two together. So single crochet, two together. 
single crochet, two together, single crochet, bring my hook through, two single crochets together, single crochet, two single crochets together, single crochet, two single crochets together. And the next row, we're just going to do two single crochets together all the way around. Single crochet, two together. Single crochet, two together. Slip stitch to join. Chain one. Woof. All right, this should be our last row of the top of the hat. Hopefully. So we're just going to cro double or single crochet two together all the way around. Two together, two together, two together, two together, two together. Two together. We're at the beginning of the row. We could probably get away with doing that row again because it looks like we have enough stitches. So we're gonna do that row one more time. And chain one, single crochet two together, single crochet two together. That's the that'll be two stitches. Single crochet two together. That'll be the third stitch of the row. Two together. That's the fourth and final stitch of the row. Slip stitch to join the row. Cut off a tail of a couple inches. Bind that off. Now, you can either single crochet this closed or you can use um, a needle and sew it closed. See, it's just a little bit of a hole right there. Just I'm just gonna weave it back and forth when I weave it in. And that will be the top of the hat closed off. And this is what we have so far. That white is a little bit thicker than the brown, so it's wanting to pucker a little bit. It's gonna be fine, because it's gonna be stretched out over your head. It'll be fine. You have a little drippy drip icing on the very tippy tip of your head. All right, now, make sure this fits my head. Like a glove. Fold up your brim where you want it to go. All right, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make some little peppermint candies. I'm just going to make one um, just to show you how to make the peppermint candy. And then I how to adhere it to the the brim of the hat so I'm using the peppermint twist yarn you can use red and white yarn mixed together you can make these peppermints however you want to make these little peppermint candies we are just crocheting some circles okay you can make them in just red and make them like little red because we're decorating this like a gingerbread, okay? And whatever candy you would put on your gingerbread, like, it's fine. You put little red balls, and that signifies red candies. You do red and green. You can do whatever color candies you want. I'm doing peppermints, so I'm doing the peppermint twist yarn. This is um, peppermint shimmer from Premier Yarns Basics Shimmer. So we're going to... This is a magic loop. We are making a magic loop, but I make magic loops the same way I make my slip stitches or my slip knots. So you make like a little, little awareness ribbon. You go in and you pull up a loop and you chain one. Now we're just going to work around the circle in this loop. So we're going to put six single crochet. One, two, three, and I'm crocheting over the top of that tail. Okay, and then you can pull it tight as you go. That's three single crochet, four single crochet, five single crochet, and six. Make sure this tail is long enough that you can pull it tight. Okay. 
We're going to slip stitch to the very first stitch we created. And we're going to put two single crochets. So chain one, working over the top of your tail. We're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. So at the end of the row, we should have 12 single crochets. So that's two. There's two more. So this is three and four. Work over that tail. five and six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I have an extra stitch there so I'm just gonna put a it doesn't matter I'm putting extra uh, single crochet in there slip stitch that's my peppermint candy it's that simple we're gonna put them on here okay now you want a long enough tail on here that you can sew it in so I'm gonna say like eight inches minimum of a tail close that off and this is where we need to go fishing for my <laughs> my uh, my needles all right I got some needles. These are Susan Bates. They're just very simple wool needles. These are not my favorite. My favorite are the ones that they sell on Premier Yarns website. But I don't have those handy. Alright, we're just going to attach it somewhere on the hat. And we're going to work these stitches. So where the single crochet stitches are, we're just going to go in. The battery totally died mid-sentence. Okay, so we're going to work in the edge along the stitches that we just created, those single crochet. We're going to push it through, go through both layers of your brim because we're going to hold the brim up by, by putting these candies on here. Pull it all the way through. And then come back into the next stitch because we just worked into this stitch right here. We're going to pull up into the next stitch here. And then go into that next stitch. We're just going in and out. Just in and out. And keep it around the edges because it'll stop those edges from trying to curl up. So I just use those single crochet stitches to crochet or er, to sew in and out of. This hat is going to be stinking cute. I can't wait to show you guys pictures. I'm so excited. <laughs> Now we're just going to do this and we're going to make as many of these peppermint candies as we want to go around the front of these. Like I said, you can also put a face on here. If you want to make a face instead of just like a peppermint, instead of this peppermint thing, you could do the same pattern in black and those are eyeballs. Put a little smiley face and then make red ones or pink ones for the cheeks. Either way you want to make it. You can make it with a face or you can make it with like this with the candy like I'm doing. You can embellish it however you want. You can sew some jingle bells on here. You can do whatever you want. It's your hat. Alright. Look at that guys. We got a peppermint on there. Now just continue that until you have the amount of peppermints you want. I am going to stagger the peppermints. So the peppermints are not going to be all. There's going to be one here. There's going to be one up here. There's going to be one down here. Like, they're going to be all over the place. Okay? This is not. This is going to look like a little kid made this hat. And it's going to be so cute. Alright, so when you get done, and this, you feel like this has been secured on. Okay? I'm going to go in the middle just a couple of times. Just to make sure it's secured on extra good. Just pull it back up one more time. And then weave it in through the stitches. Okay, just weave it in, doesn't matter how you weave it in, three or four times it'll be nice and secure, that tail ain't going to come out, just weave it any old way. Give a little stretch so that tail falls in. How cute is that? 
How cute is it? This hat is adorable. All right, keep making peppermints, put them on. You can even put peppermints up here if you want. I mean, you do you peppermint it out if you want. Put some little holly berries on there, make some little leaves for the holly berries. Just make it cute and then show me pictures of it. I wanna see it on the Instagram, I wanna see it on Facebook groups. Like, send it in my email if you can't do either of those. I want to see your guys' hats because I'm really excited about this. I'm having so much fun. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching our little gingerbread hat, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.